All right, we're going to talk about one of the more complicated objects in Max today, the collection or coal. Coal is just an object that you create, you give it a name, and that's it. It stores a collection of data, and that data can be input by double clicking on coal and then typing it in using this format. Give it an index number starting with zero and then counting up in whole numbers as integers and then a value. Then a semicolon. You save the file. as a text file, might I add. And if you've done it correctly, you can then open it again and do stuff with it. Now, what would you want to do with that? Well, if you feed in the input numbers, uh, I'm just going to use an integer box here. It will output. Um, obviously, we're going to have to route by symbol here because that's text. I know what you're thinking. That's great, Ben. Uh, you've probably finally lost it. You can store text. Well, it's more than that. Uh, we can also store multiple lines. Okay, let's save it again. So now, hmm, what's going on, everybody? Interesting. It's outputting stuff, but it's getting caught here under route symbol. Let's get rid of that. Now it's outputting everything as a list and not as a symbol. Cool. So why would I want to do this? Well, because I want to use this to control things like pitch or different values for effects in a piece. Let's take a look at how I do this with pitch. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get down and dirty into MIDI notes. Uh, what I've done is I've already gone ahead and created pitch.text. And I created this using just a uh, text edit, but you can use any text editor you want that does not affect the formatting. So good text editors, text edit, uh, Visual Studio Code, Atom, bad text editors, Microsoft Word, Apple Pages, or uh, whatever that one is that they give you by default. Um, and Google Docs, do not use those. It will screw up your formatting. Again, the format for coal is number, comma, what you want in that line, semicolon. And that line can be as long as you want because you can break it up using unpack messages which we'll look at in a little bit. If you want to do everything in a separate file, which I highly recommend, you can load it into Cole by using the message read, and then you have to give it the same uh, name of the file. So pitch.txt. And this file 
that uh, the patch is referring to and the patch have to be saved in the same directory. So we're just going to go ahead and save this on the desktop as coal test. There it is. So now if I click on that, it's overwritten everything in the coal. And I've got all of these MIDI notes that are indexed by number. Okay. Well, guess what we're going to do now? We're going to duplicate that and we're going to do coal rhythm because I've already gone ahead and I've created rhythms. Now, rhythm in Max is a little bit different. Uh, you have a lot of different values that are going to go into uh, creating rhythms through the translate object. So translate, let me bring this up. First, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping with route symbol because these are single things and we'll put a value to do, do there so we can see what it selects. Uh, let's create translate. All right, so translate translates uh, different units of time. And the units of time are fixed or relative. So let's click on here where it says time values. And this will bring up all of the stuff about the time value syntax. So you can do things like milliseconds, hours, all of that. Or you can do note values. And this is what we're looking at is the table of note values at the bottom. So a whole note is 1n. A half note is 2n, a quarter note is 4n, eighth note is 8n, etc. Uh, 16, 32, 64, up to 128n. If you want to add a dot, it would be nd. So a quarter note dotted would be 4nd. If you want to do a triplet, you add a t. So eighth note triplet is 8nt. Uh, doing this gets a little crazy. But as you can see, it's very useful because what we're going to do is we're going to use translate and it's going to say, what do you want to translate? And if I can click on it, I can tell it note values to MS. So just note values and MS. This will take what I've got coming in and it's going to translate that into milliseconds. So let's load that up and see what we get. And then I'm going to hook up an integer and we can have this open in another window. So right now uh, it's using the global transport, which is up under uh, extras. Where are you? I can never remember. Ah, there it is. Global transport. We're at 44120. So a whole note, 1n, is 2,000 milliseconds. Half note is 1,000. Uh, half note dotted is 1,500. Quarter note is 500 milliseconds. Quarter note dotted is 750. Eighth note is 250, eighth note dotted is 375, sixteenth note is 125 milliseconds, and a 32nd note is 62.5 milliseconds, according to the current set on the global transport. If I wanted to, I could change that. So let's change that to 60, and then go back to index 0, and now my whole note is 4,000. Everything has effectively doubled. I'm just going to go back to 120, though, and just leave it at the default values for this exercise. So what I've created here is two collections that have different uh, data. It's not a synchronous set of data. Um, what I want this to do is to load up at the start. So I'm going to load bang it. Connect the two. Now what I want to do is to take a look at my P 
pitch and rhythm files and see how many I go up to. I go from 0 to 41 for pitch. And for my rhythm, I go from 0 to 8. Good stuff. We can delete that. Now, why is this important? Because what I want to do is to play the pitches in my coal in sequence using a counter. So what I'm going to do is bring that down. I'm going to create a counter. I'm going to give it the argument 0 to 41. Connect it up to coal. For the pitch, anyway. Then I'm going to create a metro object that will output, oh, let's do every 1,000 milliseconds by default. Create a big toggle, maybe not that big, but big enough to fire the metro off. And that's going to go into counter. So that will output different pitches. And those are just MIDI notes. So in order to play them with uh, cycle or saw or try or anything like that, I would have to convert them. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to send them to make note. So make note, uh, we're going to do a default velocity of 120 and a duration of 100 milliseconds. And this is just going to send stuff directly out. But before I do that, I need to pack the two values in here because make note creates the note uh, from the pitch and then the velocity. And most importantly, it gives me the velocity off. So if I don't pack that, I'll have stuck notes. I got to have that. <laughs> And then that is going to go to note out. And it's packed into a list, so I just have to connect it to the first outlet, uh, first inlet. And I'm just going to go to my default synth. And if this is working, it should now play the tune that I have pre programmed here. Okay, it's Twinkle. Woo! But that's a little on the slow side. Let's speed her up. How about Metro 250? <laughs> okay, um, I also want to see what the current counter value is, so I'm going to put an integer box there. Now, what I want to do is to have a little bit of fun with the rhythm. The rhythm here does not correspond to the rhythms in Twinkle. What I'm going to do is to use those values randomly to change Metro. So I'm going to take the output of Translate and send that to Metro. And here's the thing, every time Metro receives something, it's going to send a bang. I want that to send a bang to random. I'm going to give it the value of 9. Remember, random will bang 0 to 1 less than what the argument is. So this is going to give me 0 to 8, which is exactly the value set that I want for that uh, rhythm, because I've got 8 different items, uh, or 9 items, but indexed 0 to 8 in the call. So here we go. This is going to be Twinkle with random rhythms that are governed by Metro. Maybe not. All right, what is going on? Let's take a look at that. Uh, translate, why are you? Ah, because I connected it to route symbol. Hey, that might be a good thing to not connect. Let's do that.
Okay, so we've got essentially a drunk walk version of Twinkle. It's staggering all over the place, uh, creating different uh, interesting rhythmic effects, but it's not something you would ever want to sit down and listen to unless you're bored. Uh, that's what you're going to be working on for this week's assignment. Specifically, what you're going to be doing is creating a much, much, much more interesting version of the collection. And what that's going to look like at the end is you're going to have a piece that is going to have the entire uh, collection in one file. It's going to have MIDI and it's going to have uh, the notes in terms of the note values so that what you hear is going to be the actual uh, song in its entirety with all of the MIDI values and all of the note values. Uh, you can use any song you want. Uh, folk songs work best, children's songs. The only one you can't use is Twinkle because I've already put that up on the website as an example. <laughs> 